Good morning, everybody. I hope you can you can all hear me. Um, I'm afraid I wasn't with you at 8.30 this morning, but I had a good reason. I was about halfway up the mountain that I live on, um, and um, I think the the experiences of the last three or four years have reminded me that, that, that looking after yourself is absolutely vital if you intend to look after anybody else. So um, whilst I don't have the pictures, um, I, I think I did uh, jo join with many of you in making sure I was having a ramble somewhere. It, it's really good to, to see you all here. Um, usually one of the first tasks when, when you're opening an event of this nature is, is almost to warm people up. I can see you're a chatty crew. Um, a gobby crew, probably, actually, which is, which is, which is no bad thing, um, because learning is meant to be fun, isn't it? Le learning is all about curiosity um, and finding a way to engage with other people, many of whom you will have never met before. So hopefully over the course of the next three days, even though we're doing this through a virtual sort of platform, um, we're all experienced enough now in this world to be able to project our personalities, aren't we? And personality really, really matters. Um, but yeah, t taking the time uh, out of your busy diaries to, you know, take a moment to reflect in terms of where your career is right now. Um, ask yourself some quite profound questions about where where you want to be and what sort of leader you want to be is always time well spent. It's very, very clear that your organizations have all decided that you've got something special in you. Um, there was some competition to be here this week. Um, and you're clearly seen to, to be the sort of individual that's got something special to offer. And by God, do we need special. Never has there been a more exciting time, in my view, to be a leader in public service. Um, we're not running out of challenges um, and we're not running out of opportunities. But the, the whales that, that you will lead, well, you are leading, but I, I guess over the course of the next three or four year, years, you'll take a more prominent place in, it is a nation that needs to carve a different direction. It's a nation that doesn't need to preoccupy itself with the word recovery. It needs to preoccupy itself with the word purpose. What are we for? What are we fighting for? And what's the sort of leadership that a small, agile nation really needs as we look out towards 2030? I'm delighted by the nature of the program that has been put together for you over the next three days. And day one today is rammed full. Um, you've got four really interesting speakers that will offer you different perspectives and different challenges. My encouragement to you is to take from each of those inputs what really works for you. Don't expect everything to in a, in a conference. That's never the, the, the case, is it? You're looking to mine nuggets that really work for you as individuals and help you to understand or develop your, your own theories around who you want to be. You'll have heard and you've read so many times about the importance of authenticity in leadership, um, the importance of being able to lead it with, uh, through times of uncertainty, and you've helped your organizations do that over the last period, probably in a way that, that few generations have done since, since the Second World War. So, so you're actually experienced and gifted um, in these arenas already. But have you had the opportunity to, to take the learning? Have you actually had the opportunity to condense what you've learned? So it's making you um, the very best version of you today um, and positioning you to become even better over the course of the next couple of years. So as Alex said, I've been a chief executive in Wales now for, for so long that I'm now old. When I started, I was quite young. I'd only just broken 40. Uh, when I became chief executive of Monmouthshire County Council. I'm in my 13th year and I've seen some stuff. Um, but actually, I'm more excited today than, than, than on the day that I took up my role. The role that I have now bears no resemblance in any way, shape or form to the job description that I was appointed on. I dug it out last night to remind myself what chief executives tend to be appointed to do. And scarily enough, Many job descriptions that, that are being issued today resemble mine from 13 years ago. They're wrong. They're not appropriate. Leadership, um, leadership of a place, of a space, uh, 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 of a colleague base, of a, of a value set, of a political infrastructure. These are arts and these are sciences. Um, a chief executive job description should not be about project delivery and program management. It should be about developing narratives. It should be about storytelling. 
It should be about hopefully um, being able to conjure up emotionally evocative pictures that people believe in. Leadership is about hope. The first time I chaired um, uh, an Academy Wales Day, I remember that the American theorist and, and leadership writer Meg Wheatley uh, was a part of the day. If you've never come across Meg, Meg Wheatley, write the name down, Google it. She is amazing. Um, and she was the reason that I actually wanted to chair that day. I wanted to meet her. Um, I almost sound like a, a fan going to Glastonbury, don't I? But you know, I, I, I read a lot of his stuff and I thought, well, who's the human being behind this? Does she really come across in, in real life in the way that her writing suggests that she should? Does she really live what, what she writes down? And the answer with Meg was yes. Um, and she delivered an amazing input, which was about leadership, hope, emotion, um, and leaders needing to understand that emotion is probably the most important tool within the toolkit. You need to, 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 to as I say, and, and that's where I sort of took a lot of my sort of learning from in terms of the importance of storytelling, um, being visible, being out there and being authentic, but trying to take place forward inclusively. I mentioned in my opening address that, that the challenges that you face are, are so different to the challenges that I faced when, when I started out. Um, climate change. Um, it's not a glib term, is it? You know, Fee's going to talk a lot about nature, I'm sure, over the course of her, 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 her input. And the, the things that social sciences can learn from natural sciences are absolutely amazing. The things that you can learn in terms of how ecosystems work, how balance is achieved, how, how failure is a pre prerequisite of success, and they're all vital learning ingredients for people that are looking to strive in public service as we go forward um, over the next two, two to three years. But they're not issues that are commonly talked about. I hope you'll, you'll take something from that over the next 72 hours. But the heart, I think, of this, of this session is around adaptive leadership. People are not going to be talking to you about technical leadership. Indeed, if they are, they're probably failing you. Adaptive leadership is a much, much different challenge. It's leading in places that nobody has ever been before. There is no script. Um, you need to find different ways through and different ways of developing pictures that people believe in. You need a good dose of courage. You need a lot of humility uh, and, and a bit of sticking power. Um, and I think hopefully over the course of the next couple of days, we, we'll, we'll offer you some insight on those particular agendas. For me, uh, and I'll, I'll end my short input with, with, with one particular um, thing that, that matters to me. I very quickly in my leadership career stood away from wishy-washy visions and wishy-washy missions. I took the view that my mother didn't understand all that, what, what all that was about, and my dad wouldn't really understand it either. I had no desire to be John the, the, the Baptist, and I didn't want people to believe I was a mad person. So, so, so visions and missions, not for me. What was really important to me and, and the organizations that I tried to play a part in building was purpose, being absolutely clear on purpose and acting on purpose, innovating for purpose, doing things with others deliberately. So narratives, words, consistency in leadership are really, really important. And again, hopefully you'll have the chance to think some of that through over the course of the coming days and the days that follow.